My question for you tonight is, how can we protect the integrity of our elections so that we may have confidence in the outcome? Thank you. That is a question that's probably on the minds of about 70 million people uh, mm -hmm. across the nation. It's one of the questions that we've gotten a lot of in advance. And Mike, I'll let you take the first shot at that. Sure. Well, there are several things that need to happen, and, and uh, election integrity is vital uh, for our future. Um, I, I um, know the, the details of what happened last time reasonably well. I took a pretty thorough study of it uh, from a legal perspective, and I believe that there were constitutional irregularities in many, many states, but in the states where it was very close, um, in every one of those states, there were constitutional irregularities, which means that they counted the ballots in a way that didn't match the pre-existing state law. And it was they, mainly in the mail-in ballot category. Um, they were setting up boxes uh, to, in parking lots to come and put your ballot in when state law didn't permit it. They weren't validating the signatures in the way the state law mandated. And it was often done by a decision of a secretary of state or by a local judge or by some other official, either ahead of time or on the fly. And the Constitution is very clear about this, that the election process for the President of the United States is uniquely controlled not by the states, but by the state legislature. And so only the legislature can change the law for presidential elections. And so other officials, you know, if state law permits them to make these changes for other elections, perhaps, but not for the election of president. And the Supreme Court has ruled on that, the Bush versus Gore cases. And so um, I believe that the central problem was the failure to follow the pre-established process in counting the votes. And I believe that if the votes have been recounted, uh, according to the correct legal process, the outcome may well have been different. Because, for example, in Georgia, the number of ballots that were mailed in in 2016 and were disqualified for irregularities was a few percentage points. But it was less than 1% that were disqualified this time. A, a complete change in the number of ballots that were disqualified because they used a different system of counting. And if you use a different system of counting, you're going to get a different outcome. And so if you have the old and correct uh, legislative adopted system, um, so the basic answer is we've got to go back to the law adopted by the legislature. That's number one. Number two is the HR1 in Congress is designed to permanently enshrine all the bad things that happened in the last election. It is a, a horrible bill from a lot of perspectives, but it undermines election integrity in a big way, and that bill must be defeated, and if it passes, it's got to be challenged at the outset. The final thing I'll say is that the, the left-leaning litigation team that was brought to the front, there were over 300 cases litigated uh, in the year of prior to the election, all designed to loosen ballot integrity, and they did their, their work. Uh, and ballot integrity was loosened. And, and so our side, the conservative side of the movement, wasn't on the field litigating those in a material way. We can't let that ever happen again. And so those are the three things, and the state legislature, I'll go one more, the state legislatures, uh, especially where the, the people are interested in ballot integrity, it shouldn't be along partisan lines, but it basically is right now. Where Republicans co control state legislatures, they need to in take measures, and there are a lot of things they can do. But the main thing is make sure the people who are casting the ballots are the people who are actually supposed to be casting the ballots. If you do that, we're going to be okay. Mike, let me ask you uh, to uh, clarify something uh, that has been out there in the media. You, you talked about the constitutional regularities which led to this uh, troubled outcome. That's different than voter fraud. It is. P please explain that so folks will know that th there's, those are two different issues. Well, the way you would prove voter fraud in, in this last election would have been to take those ballots, count them under the, the correct um, process, and then you've got a stack of ballots that don't meet the standards, and you start looking at those ballots. But until you count them under the correct process, it's impossible to prove voter fraud one way or the other. We know for a fact that they didn't follow the pre-existing law. That's an unassailable fact. Nobody can l legitimately dispute it. Now, whether they had the authority to change the, fact, the, the, the law, 
Perhaps they can dispute that, but if you say, did they follow the pre-existing statutory law, nobody can legitimately dispute that. The fraud would have been discovered by doing a recount using the correct legal standard. And so um, we, we know the one thing, we suspect the other, but the, the irregularity should have been enough to cause the courts to require a proper accounting of the, of the process in the proper fashion.